Hey everyone and welcome. My name is Karen Margulis and welcome to my studio. I am here with a new video and I'm really excited about the video today because I'm going to answer that age-old question, am I finished yet? You know, that's probably the hardest part of painting is, well, starting. But once you get started, how do we know when we're done? How do we know if the painting is finished? And how do we know what those last all-important marks should be to finish the painting? So I want to show you today, in today's video, I'm going to solve that problem, at least the way I solve it. There's, of course, no one... Uh, only one answer, but I'm going to share with you how I finish a painting and the steps that I take. And I'm going to finish one of my paintings that I already started as a demo and then show you how I do those last all important marks. So stick with me because in the beginning of the video I want to share with you my process and then I will actually finish the painting. So you have a painting, you get so far in the painting and you're like, hmm, I don't know if it's done or not. What do I need to do to finish it? Um, I can't, I don't even know if I'm done. And this, we, all, we all get to this point in the painting. So what I do is I normally step away from the painting. Because if you don't know what to do next, the best thing you can do is step away from it. Because if you just keep working and you're not there, you're not present, you don't know why you're making marks, chances are you're going to overwork the painting. So step away, take a break, and uh, I'll take a break anywhere from an hour to maybe days or even months. Uh, and then when I come back to the painting, I come back with a fresh uh, point of view, a fresh outlook. Now, that's fine, but when you look at the painting after you come back to it, how do you know what to do? I mean, didn't really help to step away from it if you don't know what you're looking for. So what I have done is I've created what I call a painting punch list. This is my punch list, and what I'll do is I'll put a photo of it at the end of the video so you can take a screenshot or you can see what it looks like. Um, but basically, I only ask myself a few questions. You can find, if you search online or some of your art books, lots and lots of checklists for finishing a painting. And a, a lot of them are fantastic resources, but it's too many questions. So I simplify it to just three main questions, and that is... Have I created a visual journey for my painting? Am I leading the viewer through the painting? Am I showing them those areas that are important? And then have some secondary areas that are also interesting. Uh, so visual journey. And then is there a believable feeling of depth in the painting? If I'm doing a landscape painting especially, I want there, you to feel like you could go back into the painting. And that's tricky to do when you have just a flat piece of paper. And then, is there an earth-sky connection, which simply means, does it look like one painting? Uh, you don't want it to look like a nighttime painting and a daytime landscape or nighttime sky. You want the sky and the ground to have some sort of visual connection. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when I start painting. And then I look for things like uh, worms, which I'll show you because I have a worm in this painting, um, tangents, anything that's distracting and takes the viewer eye away from the painting. So those are kind of the last things. Now, it's great to have a punch list, but a punch list is only as good as the answers that you give. So what I do is I take this one step f further and I look at the painting and then I say, okay, answer those questions and then I write down my answers. And this is the key. Because if you, if any of you are like me, you will give yourself answers and then you get up to the painting and you've completely forgotten what you intended to do and that leads to overworking because you work on areas that you really didn't need to work on. So I write down these answers and then when I start painting I just go down the list like a punch list. I, I, I say I need to lower the water, I need to make it lighter, I need to refine the sky and so on and so forth and that's how I finish the painting and when I get to the bottom of the list I'm done. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this painting that is almost done and take this punch list and make those adjustments on the painting. Just a little back story on this particular painting. This is 18 by 24 on mounted UART paper. <clears throat> I did this demonstration for the IAPS convention back in June of 2019. And I have not finished it. So basically I took it all to the almost finished and then 
ba uh, basically ran out of time in the, in the demo, but I would have needed to step back away from it a a anyways to do those finishing marks. So it is almost finished. And you know, some people might look at it and say, well, but that looks finished. But I know that if I w slow down at the very end of a painting, go through my punch list, there are things that I can do to make adjustments. So let's just do these one at a time. Oh, I'm also working with my set of Terry Ludwig um, Floral Landscape Pastels. This is the set that I curated. I will also use a few uh, assorted new pastels. These are just, I call this my grass box, just assortment of hard pastels. So the first thing on my list is lower the water, make it lower, and make it a little bit lighter. So um, I don't need it to be up there quite as high, and I want to change the color, make it a little bit lighter. So I'm going to take a lighter blue and very lightly, are you, am I in the way? Oh, okay. I feel like the camera was right, I was standing right in front of it. So I'm going to lighten it just a touch with a paler blue, and then I'm going to go back with the, oh, just a little bit darker. I don't want it to stand out too much. And I want it to lower it. It was up too high. So what I'm going to do to lower it is take the color that was the lowest part of the sky and bring that sky color down just a hair. And this is how I'm lowering that water. So I'm going back over it. And now I want to make sure it's perfectly flat and level. So I'm also going to take my pinky finger and very, very lightly blend it. Because we want it to feel like it's just disappearing. Because it's not um, the most important part of the painting. It's, it's just something that's there in the background. So I've lowered it, I've kind of gave it a little bit of haze or mist, and I've made it a little bit lighter, and I think it looks a little bit more beautiful. <clears throat> All right, I want to refine the sky. That's number two on my checklist. So I need to make sure there's a smoother transition. There's some spots that I didn't get coverage with the pastel it, while I was putting down that first layer. So I'm just going to go back and refine the sky a little bit, so I'm putting the darker blue. When I'm refining the sky, what I'm actually also doing is starting to refine the tree shapes a little bit more. So one way that you can create more interesting trees is to do negative painting with your sky color. So now I'm starting with a cooler blue, and I'm getting a little bit lighter and a little bit warmer with my blue because that is what happens on a typical blue sky day. So I want to take this blue that I have in my hand and carve into this tree to make a more interesting silhouette. So I want the sky holes to be a little bit more telling and make a little bit more interest with the tree itself, tree shape itself. One thing about sky holes is very rarely do I get them right on the first pass. We're going to be doing a lesson on trees and sky holes on, on my Patreon page next month. So if you're interested in learning more about painting trees, I'd love to have you over there. That sky hole is too light. So see how it just kind of jumps out at us? I used the wrong color blue to make those sky holes and then they were too light and they ended up looking like ornaments rather than actual sky holes. So one thing you also might notice that I'm doing is if I put in a sky hole, I, I tap it lightly with my finger just to soften it, to kind of make it disappear. I want softer edges on the sky hole on some of them. Well, there's a whole lot to learn about painting sky holes. I'm just scratching the surface here on this video. And then over here, this tree shape is not very interesting, so I'm going to take the lighter blue and carve this tree shape to make a more interesting... This is probably more... I guess you could consider this more of a shrub than a tree. So I want to make it a little bit more interesting. Look at how right here it's just kind of like a, a straight line. 
That is not a natural looking tree shape, so I'm going to take the dark green. Well, that wasn't the dark green. Take the dark green and change that edge. All right. Now, what's else on the list? Um, fix the trees, refine the trees a little bit more. So I'm going to do that, but in order to do that, I'm going to use a little bit of workable fixative, and I'm using the Blair Very Low Odor Workable Fixative. And actually, it, normally I would spray it outside, but I really don't use very much of the fixative, just a very light coat. And what that does is it kind of cements those dark areas in place so when I go back over them with other pastel it kind of skips over the dark and it gives the illusion of texture and which is what I want more texture in these trees so we're going to let that dry just a bit doesn't take much I'm going to go over the dark with some lighter warmer greens because I want the tree to have a little more volume I want it to feel like it's uh, a little bit rounder so I want to pull out some lighter areas in this in this tree I'm going to get a little bit lighter still pull out some of those leaves and some of them go a little bit lower even also what I noticed in this in these trees is they were not just um, green it was a, a really a, a nice kind of peachy feeling to the trees. So I'm going to add just a little bit of the peach. And the nice thing about that is, I'm going to cover it up, I just want it to be kind of hidden, is there's a lot of peach in the ground so it kind of allows there to be a visual connection. Now we're going to add a little bit of light to the bushes on the right side. And if I add the lighter, warmer green everywhere, what ends up happening is it flattens out the tree shapes. So you want to be careful that you don't add light everywhere or it becomes less effective. It's nowhere. I'm going to use the light to carve these. Oops, that was the wrong color. That was the pale pink and I really wanted the pale yellow. I want to create more interesting negative spaces in the tree trunks. Back here is really going to be picking up where the water goes. So again with sky holes you want to make sure that the color you use actually represents what it is that's behind the shape. I'm going to reinforce the trunks with my dark and just a little bit pull a little bit out and there's some trunks right in here and soften them. All right, so I think that's pretty good right now on the trees. I could fuss at them, but then really they're not the most important thing. They're just the, tr the flowers leading back to the trees is what I really want to focus on. Then I wrote down I want to soften the edge of the grass where it meets the tree. So I don't know if you've noticed, but it looks, it's almost straight across. And there's a hard edge. It just kind of pops forward and it's boring. So what I want to do is create more of a dip in this. So I'm going to take a stiff brush, brush out, that's not a stiff brush, let me grab a stiffer brush, the stiffer, stiffer the better, and I'm going to brush away some of this. Now you might be saying, wait, wait, why are you doing that? It was done. But you cannot be afraid to make these adjustments because oftentimes you you are going to make things better. Hopefully, that's the idea. Um, and if we're if we're too if we make the painting too precious, you don't get to make corrections that might lead to a better painting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few little hints of bushes down here so that I'm changing the slope a little bit of the make it lighter make some of these bushes have a little bit of light and then sneak the water down in here just a little bit more and now I can correct the slope and make more of a slope so in order to do that I need to go back with my yeah my lightest coolest green because 
I want to create that, remember I want that believable feeling of depth. So things tend to get lighter, cooler, duller, fuzzier as we go into the distance. This was a, a really hard edge here too, so I want to soften that up. So I'm taking a lighter, duller, cooler green, just breaking up the edge so it doesn't look like it's such a straight line. And now I want to uh, kind of carve into this slope that I created just to define it a little bit more. All right, what else is on my list? Um, so I made more of a slope. I, now I need to address the flowers and the way they're leading back into space. So I, it, the way I'm looking at it is I want the viewer's eye to go to here, to maybe here, to back here, to these trees, and then have the trees bring us back around. I have a start for this eye movement, but I need to enhance it. So in order to enhance it, I'm going to have to add some more flowers and add some more detail. So let's start by adding a few more flower shapes. Um, so let's add a couple of them down in here. So that the eye starts down lower, kind of goes up to this area, then I want you to come over here, right? So why not add a clump of flowers right in this area to draw the eye up here, and then back to this area, and then back to the distance. Now what happens is when the flowers go further back into space, they're going to get smaller, and the yellow is going to get duller, not as bright. So I'm using a yellow ochre to suggest the flowers in the distance. And what if there were just a few that we could see down here by this tree, which is our focal tree. This is our star area. So why not show a few little tiny flowers so that the viewer can assume that once we get back there, there's still more flowers even back in the distance. So let's refine a few more of these flower shapes. I used a warmer uh, orange yellow, and now I want to use a cooler, more lemony yellow. And sometimes having the combination of those two makes for more interesting, more intense, more vibrant yellows. So I'm just making a few. The best way to paint fields of flowers is to create masses and then pull out a few flowers at the edges. Let's just put a few over here because this area here is so empty. Look at this big empty area. We really don't want to have too much or else it's going to look like polka dots, but we certainly need a few it, that will hide with grasses over in this area. Uh, so back to what I was saying about the masses create masses and then put in a few at the edges. And you can see that I'm pressing really hard when I'm painting these flowers at the end because I really want to see you to see these nice ch uh, chunky juicy marks. So I'm, I'm shouting with my pastel. I'm not using a very light touch which I use for most of the painting. Let's give a few of these flowers a dark center. I don't really want them everywhere because if you put them everywhere then they lose their impact. Ooh. I pressed so hard I broke that one. Then the last thing that I'm going to do is add some detail with the grasses themselves. And so up until this point I put in a few of them during my initial demo. But normally I wait till the end to put in these final grass marks. And I'm just going to very simply take some of the grass colors that are in this box and create some broken lines some linear marks with the harder pastel where I see the grasses. Now, you wouldn't see big, tall grasses in the background because that would take away from the feeling of depth. But you would see them here in the foreground of the painting. So I'm taking kind of a burnt sienna color to begin with. And I've got a yellow ochre color, just to, su to suggest some of the dry grasses that I see in my reference photo. Now, the way I do this is, is, the way, is the way I make my marks, and you may paint grasses in a different way, and that's, that's great because that's what makes your paintings unique to you, the way you make your marks. 
but this is the way I make my grass marks, my final grass marks. And the one thing that I will caution you is it's very, very easy to get carried away and put in too many grasses. Uh, and then it's, you know, too many. It just takes away the impact. So I'll do a few and then I say, okay, now how does the eye read these grasses? I want some of them to be soft and some of them I'm going to create a harder edge. So you can see here that I'm pressing a lot harder on some of these grasses and I'm putting them in such a way that they're pulling your eye into the painting. If I put them all going this way, your eye would follow them and they would go out, you'd follow them out of the painting. I might put a, one or two blades going out just for the sake of something being different. But for the most part, I really want to pull your eye into the painting. I think I'm going to add a little bit more of that peachy color, which I see in my photo, which is really nice. A little bit more in there. And let's see, what else is on my list? Oh, one more thing. I said add some blue down in the grass. Add some blue down in the grass. Why would I want to do that? Well, let's see. I'll take some blue and I'll add a few marks of blue down here in the grass and just a few. If you do too many it takes away and what it is it's an unexpected color but it relates to the blue in the sky so now we have kind of closure everything kind of goes together and that is it and that's how I finish the painting I basically take my punch list I come up with the answers, I write them down, and I go through that list step by step, one thing at a time. Now normally, I, when I make a mark, when I'm not doing a video, I'll make a mark, I'll step back, I'll come back, I'll make another mark, I'll step back. I really do this part very slowly. I paint fast, but when I'm finishing, I slow down. So I hope you found this video helpful, and if you want to learn more about painting flowers and foregrounds and grasses, head on over to my Patreon page. I um, have a monthly lesson or monthly theme, and I'd love for you to join us there. But like this video, subscribe. Uh, there's going to be more coming. I'm really excited about this channel, and I, and I want it to grow, so help me out with that, and let's paint.